Welcome back to Daily Flash. According to the Centers for Disease Control, almost 25 million Americans suffer from springtime allergies. Our next guest has a simple plan of seven habits for healthy living. Welcome to the show. It is 2021's Chiropractor of the Year, Dr. Chris Perrin. Hey there, Dr. Perrin, how are you? I'm great, how are you? I'm good, except it's allergy season here where uh, we filmed the show in Florida and I am suffering. So I'm excited to talk to you today. So you mentioned that um, the breathing, it's all about breathing better air. Uh, and it's just really one of the most important things we can do for our body in general. How do we do that? Explain this. Sure. So I have five ways that you can breathe better air. Okay. Now, the first way you can breathe better air is to make sure you change your home air filters at least every six months. You see, when you don't change your air filters, it keeps dirty air circulating. Right. I had a family that I've been seeing for quite a while, and all of a sudden, they all developed these terrible respiratory symptoms all at the same time, and they just wouldn't seem to go away. So I said one day out of the blue, have you all changed your air filters lately, you know, in your HVAC unit at home? So they went home and checked, and sure enough, what they found in there was enough fuzz to make a nasty furious blanket. It was disgusting. <laughs> so they ran off the Home Depot, got some replacements, popped them in, and then boom, their symptoms went away completely and their great health returned. Yeah, and it's such, a, a, it's such a simple thing and air filters are relatively inexpensive. So it's something you can do frequently and uh, I, it, it can make a world of difference. Here's another one that a lot of people sure. probably wouldn't think of, but there are actually house plants that help clean the air. Pretty much all house plants clean the air. This is you, I'm sure know, us humans breathe out carbon dioxide. And our good friend, the house plant, takes that carbon dioxide and gives us back oxygen. All right. The other one, this is a big one in our household because uh, I'm super sensitive to it. And so is my son. Use non-toxic cleaning supplies. Yes. So this is a big one to myself as well. I strongly recommend everybody gets rid of all of their old school 70s, 80s type cleaning supplies like ammonia. 409, that bald guy, get rid of him. You don't want that stuff. If I walk into a room shortly after Windex has been sprayed, I literally gag. Sounds like you might have the same issue. Yeah. But you know what? It's a good sign because it's showing that our lungs don't like it. It's not supposed to. So at our house, all we use is modern non-toxic cleaning supplies, and you should too. Yeah, you just kind of have to experiment a little bit and, and find the brands that you like and that and that work uh, for cleaning your home. You have another one on here. Speaking of using natural substances, lemonization. What is that? That's an awesome question. It's actually a lot of fun. So here's another simple one. You just take a lemon and you shove it down in your garbage disposal. You flip the switch and you grind that baby up. <laughs> and what are you really doing? You're lemon zesting your whole kitchen. It's a natural air freshener. Now, scented candles and chemicals and all that, there's a lot of toxins in that stuff. So kind of like the chemical cleaners, try to avoid them. Now, a lot of people ask, is it just the lemon? No, it's, it's any citrus. So limes work great, oranges work great. Because really what you need is the peel. You need the rind of it. So you can go ahead and eat that orange. You can whip up some margaritas. Just take the peel in the end, stick it in that garbage disposal, grind it up and make sure your kitchen gets all that zest. I love that. And I mean, who doesn't love the smell of lemons and limes? I mean, it's just fresh and invigorating. Okay, your last of the five tips is to move your air. I'm assuming you mean a fan, open the doors. What does that entail? Excellent. So the CDC has shown and proven that stagnant air is one of the leading causes of sickness and disease. So just by getting your air moving, you will be healthier. As you mentioned, the easiest way is to open some windows, open a door, but allergy season sometimes, right? So the air quality outside sometimes is not good to bring into our homes. Right. So during those times, simple. That same HVAC unit, make sure the fan is running constantly in it. That'll constantly circulate the air in your home and make it not stagnant. Now, if you don't have an HVAC unit in Florida, well, I hope you do in Florida, <laughs> then uh, you can use, like you mentioned, ceiling fan, box fan, 
My favorite suggestion is to throw a dance party and whip up some of those margaritas and just get things moving. And that'll get the air <laughs> yeah. moving too. So I, just have I fun with a, it, but moving air is healthier. I sense a theme with margaritas. You must like them. I've heard them a couple of times in the course of this interview. <laughs> it's a rumor. <laughs> <laughs> Real quickly, we only have about 30 seconds here, doctor. Sure. Uh, you were giving me some advice. I suffer from allergies and some people will tell you to elevate your head uh, to help drain. You say no. No. So... The tightness in the front of our necks has a direct correlation to our sinuses closing down. So that gravity of wanting to sleep with your head propped up so things can drain will actually tighten this more, leading to actually your sinuses being stuffier. So it's oversimplistic. During the day, flip over on your stomach and stretch up like tummy time for a baby and stretch okay. this open. Just stretch for count to 10 to open this up. And it'll actually help open your sinuses as well. All right. Awesome. Thanks so much. We appreciate it. Those are things we can all incorporate today. You're welcome. Daily Flash will be right back.